One, two, three. Perfect. Uh, you know what? I, I forgot to do that the last couple of times. And then you got to spread it way out and yeah. look for little blips that yeah. you can. Yeah, it makes it much easier when you have it. Yeah. And we have a distinct sound. <clears throat> yep. So, uh, my name is Tim Yarmuk, and this is Jajuna Speaks. And we're here today at the Lions and Sun restaurant because they were kind enough to allow us to. Um, to do our interview here, and I'm really, ha I'm really happy to do it here, as I'm sure you are, because the Lions and the Suns totally embraces the local music scene, and they're very supportive and loving, so I appreciate that. And we're here to interview Matt and Toby. Goodman? Goodman, yeah. Well, it's good, brother's good. I, ne I never, I'm an old man, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... The obvious reason that I want to interview you today is because you're you've become a fairly integral part of the local music scene, sure. and I've watched you since actually the beginning, yeah, more or less over the yeah. last two or three years since you. And in those days, you were talking about like the first time in a long, long time you and your brother had got back together doing music together again, and like yeah. in, in any real sense of practicing all the time and songs and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, where were you guys born? Let's start there. Well, we're going to start right at the beginning. Yes, we are. Uh, well, I was born in Chertsey, uh, which is just outside of London in England. Okay. And I assume yeah. somewhere around the same place? Uh, Kingston. 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 Yeah, in, England. In, in England. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 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 Couple Couple yeah. A couple of Brits. A couple of Brits. We emigrated here in 91. We're old. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's 30 something years and, and, and going strong. So you lost the war against the Americans, and then you finally gave up Canada. Like, what's up with all that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I absolutely refuse the topic of uh, politics of any sort. Unless Perfect, because I'm cool. Unless it's a protest song, and then I'll be more than happy to hear Oh, there you go. So um, how, how long ago did you guys integrate to Canada? It was 1991. So you've been here forever. Yeah. Your whole adult yeah, well, life. It feels like forever. Yeah, yeah. So I moved when I was 11. So how was the transition? Do you remember that all? Fine. <laughs> um, no, um, I was so young um, that, I mean, I was all gung-ho about it. I didn't have, you know, it's not like I had roots in England uh, or anything. I was, I, was, I was down for it. I was good with it. Um, and um, I'm, you know, fairly yeah. outgoing. It wasn't that difficult to make friends and, yeah. and you know. So it, it wasn't too bad for me because it wasn't that, you know, really important transitional time. And, you know, yeah. I didn't hit puberty until I was 27. So yeah. uh, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, was, uh, I was 16, so it was tougher on me. Um, yeah. I really was, was ripped away from my friend group and everybody yeah, 16, I'd known. That's yeah, and, and, you know, moved to another country where you know nobody. So, and I'm... I, Unlike Matt, I'm not outgoing. I'm, I'm I'm fairly introverted and quiet, and I don't make friends easily. And so to have to sort of start over again from scratch. Yeah, I can't um, honestly, I was I was pretty miserable for the first for the first couple of years. So, yeah. so you but, seem to find your root. Absolutely. Now, yeah. and I, I became a Canadian citizen. So, I mean, Canada is my home now for sure. I, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole that becoming a Canadian citizen. A lot, a definition of a Canadian is a really odd thing because. Um, Everybody here is Canadians, no matter where you come from, you're a Canadian, and uh, and who cares if you're from Iran or England or, or any place. If yeah. you're here, obviously you wanted to be here, so that makes you a Canadian, period. You know? yeah. So, yeah, that's good. So, when did you just get into music? So, I, for me, I, I felt like I picked up guitar very late. It was after high school. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, and I had a, a friend of mine who played uh, guitar. Yeah. And he um, he showed me three chords on a guitar once, lent, lent me his guitar for a weekend, um, and after the two days or whatever it was, I was I was putting together three chord songs. Uh, it just it, it hit me. I loved it. Um, I've always sung like I was in choir in England, right? right? So I was always a singer, uh, singer. Um, but um, yeah, it was it was just for me at that point I just wanted to learn how to play and, and, and sing you, songs and just so wanted to be, did you say you were in the choir I was in a choir so you were a choir boy I was a choir boy so there's been quite a transition <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay, yeah right. I'm not very choiry now <laughs> well, let me tell actually, you are actually uh, incredibly decent human being so that's well, I appreciate that yeah um, yeah so uh, and, and then it was you know playing on my couch for 20 years I, I yeah. didn't perform live very often at all yeah. if at all um and uh, I wasn't interested in it. Um, yeah. I just wanted to play guitar and, and sing on my couch. 
right? And so how did you get into the drums? Uh, I, I, I took a, I took a different route with music. Um, I mean, I, I took piano lessons when I was a kid for yeah. for a couple of years and quickly got bored of it. And it's one of those things I wish I'd, I'd continued with. But um, I actually got into from the age of fifteen on into sound engineering, and so I was running uh, sound for uh, vol- just volunteer stuff, but uh, mostly for churches right. and church bands, and. Um, so always was sort of around music and appreciated music from that perspective, but never really performed. Again, as the, as the quiet guy, I'm happy being at the back, you know, not on stage. Um, so were you always the guy with whatever was going on when there was a glitch in the sound? You went, oh, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah, yeah, was yeah just, we're was, always happy to have you around. Yeah, we all have sure. our ways, our own individual ways of making ourselves useful, and that welcomes us into the different communities. It's, it's kind of funny that way, but it's... Yeah, being useful yeah. is a really good way to... Uh... Yeah, yeah. And then it was about 10 or 15 years ago, I think, I decided I wanted to, to play drums and learn drums. Nice. And, and so I um, I started out with that. I actually started out with uh, with a rock band on, on my Xbox just to kind of get a feel for, do I do I like this drumming thing and do I yeah. think I can do it? Rock bands or rock band? Rock band. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, yeah, and then basically self-taught uh, yeah. drums. I, I still consider myself kind of beginner to intermediate on a, on a full drum kit. Someday, and then, you'll, uh, someday you'll be standing on a stage in front of 50,000 people yeah. and you'll still be thinking, oh, I'm a bit of an amateur. Yeah, pro- yeah, pro- yeah, yeah. Probably, probably. I mean, let's hope. Um, uh, but I play. I, I mostly played in church. Yeah. Um, and then a couple of times I had the occasion to play a cajon um, and kind of kind of liked it. Um but then it wasn't until two years ago. Two years ago, um, Matt had been been playing some solo gigs, and I was kind of on a whim one time. I was like, I should I should play with you, and, and maybe a cajon would be good because uh, with an acoustic guitar, you know, the cajon goes yeah. well with that kind of a, a a quieter, simpler kind of thing. And um, I mean, the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was not. It wasn't long before. It wasn't long before. The first kitchen fest actually that that happened. No? Like you guys, uh, kid, that was our first year together. We've been, we've yeah. been playing together for about three months at yeah. that time. Yeah, so yeah. I mean that tells you right there. Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of neat. So yeah. it's a whole new adventure still. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we've nice. both been sort of musical, and then yeah, I finished a gig in December, and uh, till we. He's like, hey, why don't we play together? I'm like, well, I was giving sure. a shot, sure. Yeah, yeah, why not? Um, and I remember he came over uh, over the Christmas holidays, and just to just to play some songs, and it was songs that he hadn't heard before. Yeah, I just started playing. He came in, and we yeah, afterwards, yeah, afterwards we looked at each other. And goes, uh, uh, how oh, yeah. how did that work so perfectly? <laughs> so yeah, we just we immediately had to play. It just, just kind of clicked right it away. Really well, clicked. Yeah. yeah, that is one thing that's kind of beautiful about music is when two people come that have never really played, not only not played together, but not even played those songs, and then you listen, and it's like there. And you want to, okay, so it's the love of the music. So that's, yeah. that's what's generating all of that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. 40 year old, 40 year old siblings never played together yeah. and yeah, then so just was, decided uh, on a whim so and it worked me out. How old you are. <laughs> 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't say in your brain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, cool. So that was in around, and I'd seen you here, I think, for the first time. Yeah. And then uh, you guys were just starting. Uh, yeah, I was doing open mic for about a year before that. Yeah. It was the first time uh, I performed uh, in front of people, other than I uh, I played at a friend's wedding. Um, my friend, she was the only one who wanted to hear me play, so I'd, I'd go to her house and play music. And one year, she's just like, "Hey, you want to play for my wedding?" I'm like, oh, "If I have to." Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that was the only live like performance I'd ever done. Um, and then, yeah, started doing open mics. Somebody dragged me out, and he's like, "No, you got to come do this thing." And for about a year, I did those. Got a solo gig. Started playing with Toby, and it's been two years of us going around. You know, yeah, it's the been area really well watching you, actually. Yeah, it's I'm, been I'm, so much fun. I pay really at close attention to all of the musicians. I, just I know do. you do. Yeah. I, yeah, for some reason, there's something, and I, I love the music, but people's life circumstances and in relation to and how they do their music and so on is a real thing with me. And, yeah. Uh, and and the growth that comes out of it. I can tell you the funny thing about that one thing I, re- I read that I happen to believe to be true um, about creativity. And it's uh, Eckhart Tolle, the New Earth guy who wrote the book, The New Earth. He's like one of those uh, enlightenment people. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I think I was supposed to be enlightened when I finished reading it, but I don't know. But he's actually a brilliant guy. And what he said was um, the reason that you cannot be creative and think at the same time. 
So people that like to get out of their heads are extremely creative. <laughs> who have a need to get out of their thought process. They just can't, you know, I mean, uh, if you live in your head, mostly, if you're more oriented towards, you know, your thought process and intellectualization as opposed to feeling, that's a great way to get out of it and that's a great way to get in touch with your feelings and all the rest of it. So there's some stuff behind all of that. Right. And, I, and I don't know if you noticed, but most musicians are real thinkers. Think too much. You know, so that's not a shot, by the way. <laughs> I, I, he doesn't I, think too much. That's not. <laughs> no, of course not. Anyway, I have no idea what that has to do with this. So I remember huh, sending you kudos from Cuba. Yes, sir. At a gig you did up at the uh, Simple Arms, actually. I think I seen you one night. Not the Sim was it Simple Arms I seen you when I was in Cuba? Where were we? Didn't you play a gig at the Simple um, Arms? Not Sim um, or was it another place? Lord. Um, it wasn't the King's Tavern. I mean, uh, yeah, Lloyd House. Uh, it might have been the Lloyd House. might have been the Lloyd House because you, you had your whole thing on and like you both had the same a vest of some kind. Yeah, right? yeah, it's always a, a shirt and tie and, and vest. Um, oh, the, so it could uh, have been anywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that's, that's like our, our, our gig outfits. I've, I've always enjoyed... Because we play a lot of punk and rock music, I've yeah. always enjoyed the you know the shirt and tie thing while playing punk music. Yeah. Kind of a throwback to like the Ramones or even the Beatles yeah, or yeah. Uh, you know Billy Joel from Green Day or you know so yeah, yeah I, there's something about wearing a tie and screaming into a microphone that makes me happy. Yeah, I seen that. I noticed yeah. that right away. So, what was your favorite music growing up? Oh, um, it's a bunch of different ones. You know my my. My dad was was uh, my dad was really into uh, classical music and and also uh, Beatles. Yeah. Um, and so I strangely enjoy uh, you know classical music. Why well, strangely? It's funny you say that. Well, not hip. Yeah, I, I, I mean it's it's not not what you would not what you would expect, but exactly um, what I would expect from you. <laughs> so it does. But, but having said that, the other the other you know what I used to listen to um, a lot of was um, was Michael Jackson. Yep, as a kid, that was a, that was a big big influence. Yeah, I remember when Thriller came out. My yeah. kids were like crazy about it. And, uh, actually, so was I at the time. Like the musical aspects of it. So yeah. the theater was fun. Uh, it was the music that was really um, pretty. Well, there we go. We've got to get this stuff. Right? There it is. Uh, yeah, so Michael Jackson stuff. It's funny. That, um, I, my son is a classical music guy. Never took a lesson in his life. But somehow he can play Beethoven, Mozart. Okay. Like, and wow. Competently. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm in awe of him. You know, I'm actually in awe of him of who he is because he's a far more settled individual than I ever be. So, the, and same thing, like it se seems odd classical music, but it isn't, I mean, it's, yeah, it's wonderful. So what's your gig when you were a kid? Uh, definitely Michael Jackson. Yeah. I was, uh, I was obsessed at one point. Um, yeah, d like you said, dad was Beatles, mom was Stones. Yeah. Um, and I found an Aerosmith cassette tape. Really? And I heard the song Dream On. Oh, and I'm like, it's all over. That's that's how electric, that's how an electric guitar should sound to me for the rest of my life. It's yeah, all yeah. over. So I just sought out rock music immediately after that. Um, yeah. So, you know, growing up again, uh, Aerosmith, uh, some Bon Jovi, yeah. uh, then got into Metallica, um, and then came the grunge era. So, like, you know, uh, Pearl Jam and, and, you know, Soundgarden and, you know, all that good stuff. Right on. So did you play their stuff? Yeah, oh, yeah. As, as much as often, get the books and find out what the chords were. And... I, uh, I actually, it's funny. I have several like official music books yeah. that I, I went to go do that because uh, I learned on an acoustic. Um, and after two years of playing that, I, I bought an electric and, and wanted to learn all this stuff. Uh, I never sang and played at the same time for many years. Really? Yeah, I just wanted to know how to play that stuff. Um, yeah. And a big influence was like the punk bands like Goldfinger and Less Than Jake. Um, so yeah, I didn't even bother singing that stuff. I just wanted to play. Uh, as, soon as, I, as soon as I heard a distortion sound, I'm like, oh, this is what it has to be for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, you, you play a, a fairly wide range now, which is... We do, yeah. Yeah. But 
when it's time to go home, it's like uh, yeah. Well, we have we have a style, right? Yeah, um, style. You know, people are like, oh, do you play country? I'm like, ah, I wouldn't call it country. <laughs> well, you know, it's like punk country, country belly, you know, or belly country, whatever they call that. Well, I mean, we'll do covers of a country song, but it sounds like us doing a punk yeah, song. Yeah, that, and that's right? perfect. So. Like, what's wrong with that? Like, that's uh, that's perfect. I mean, there's so many different interpretations of so many different songs, and the originals are amazing, and then someone does an interpretation, that's amazing, too. They do their own, that's their style. I mean, yeah, that's very cool. You know, I think for the longest time I was, uh, you know, when I did decide to sing, I was emulating a lot of artists. Yeah. I just wanted to sound like them. And then once I started playing with Toby, uh, we kind of found our own sound. And I'd like to think that any song we do now sounds like us doing it. Not like the artist. If we're doing a cover, it's not like the, the artist we're covering it. It sounds like us doing their song. So we've, we, I think we found our own sound over the last couple of years. I'm really happy with it. Yeah. Well, you know what? You guys are well, obviously you know, competent musicians when you started doing this. And then, and then you're coming into your own now as far as being tight. Mm -hmm. Like I went to see, um, you know, Ryan and George. and uh, We were there? Yeah. Yep. Sam. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I seen you there. Like, yep. you know, yeah. uh, and you see those, I have so much respect for those kids. Because you listen to them play and they're so tight. Yeah. They took the time, they did the, put the time in and they're, uh, and it's the same thing. And, so, and you guys are doing the same thing and you've, you've gotten there yourselves as far as, okay, we know what we want to do. Let's figure it out, get it organized, let's do it. Because one thing I learned from, uh, I don't you know, Jim McKenna from his, um, City TV, he used to be a... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, I, don't ask me why, but he was at some function somewhere, and we were just doing a meet or whatever. And I said, I have just have one question for you. How do you stand up there in front of all these people? And just, they hand you some papers, and you address it, like whatever it is. Like, how do you, like I said, I am terrified when I have to do that. He said, you know what? It's, it's about self-centeredness. And so my little hair went up in the back of my neck. I'm not self-centered. You know, he said, no, no, no. He, he could see right away what I was thinking. And he said, no, no, no. So what, what I mean is self-forgetting. Those people are, are not here to see you. They could care less about you. Yeah. They're here for the information that you're going to convey. They're here for the music that you're going to play. So pay attention to it. And, forget, uh, and if you pay attention to it, you'll forget about the rest. Hmm. And, and, and in the end, when I started playing, Took me a little while. I mean, you're always nervous when you start, but and then I've got to a point where, yeah, okay, I'm here to do this, and I do it. And uh, it's not there's no uh, outside influences. I mean, there is always, and I'm not afraid of screwing up anymore because I realize that I'm actually doing it all the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah feel that. Feel yeah. That. So and so it's not a disaster. It's just and and the one thing I like about playing my own music is it's not a screw up. It's a rewrite. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, um, what are your goals? Short term and long. Like, specifically for what music? For your guys' music, what are you doing? I mean, I'm, I, I just keep having fun at this point in time. Yeah. I don't think we're delusional thinking that, um, you know, we're playing stadiums anytime soon. We started very late in life. Yeah. Uh, we have responsibilities and homes and kids yeah. and... You know, so mm -hmm. it's it. You know, I'm not going on tour anytime soon. Would love to, um, but yeah. uh, it's just not realistic. I think what's realistic is, um, you know, we have uh, a handful, you know, of, of originals. Would love to put something out. Yeah, uh, we've we've recorded a few things. Um, you know, so the the hope is to get some stuff on Spotify, put out an album for the absolute right? fun of it. Just just for the love of it, yeah. the joy of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I like I said, under no. Yeah illusion that we're going to be anything um, yeah, other than two guys who really like playing music. I just started writing, actually recording. I used to tell Paul Thomas for 40 years that I've known him. I know I got a good, uh, actually I know I got a good album in me. Like that's when I first started telling him that they were albums. You know? yeah. And uh, and then about seven years ago, um, when I was like eight years ago when I was like 69, I said, Paul, I want to start recording and just writing down some of these lyrics and then and I just started and I did that, you know, and then it's just one after the other. And some really amazing stuff has come out of my music for me, but it hasn't had actually to do with the music. Like, no, with my victims no longer stopped. They flew me to Columbia to do a presentation, like in Medellin, Columbia. I went and did a presentation for adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. And, oh, wow. and my song is about memories of being one, right? And I'm, I, I, I recovered like 30 years ago, so I've had a really good life. So all of my efforts are about helping other people achieve the same, right? So I but my I went to Cuba with it and the videographer there said, uh, oh let me 
talk to my buddy, literally a 30 year television animator that's animated some of the most famous cartoons throughout Latin America in Cuba. He said, let me animate that for you. So I have a full three minute animated song. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. And so my videographer was doing some work in Medellin for this theater group. And he showed it to me. He said, oh, we got to fly him here. And so they flew me to Medellin, Colombia. And the good thing is that I, rather than just do my music, I, uh, I got and I told my story as being an adult survivor. I did the best advice I could to people who are either if you're a survivor yourself or if you're confronted by a survivor who has a need to talk. The first instinct is, you I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. Don't feel guilty about that instinct. It's pretty normal. And if you can't handle it, clearly this guy needs somebody to talk to. And if you can't do it, it's very polite to say, you know what, I'm, I get it. Let me help you find somebody because I can't deal with this right now. And so if you do that on their first step, you're helping them take that first step if you get them to somebody and that's the best thing that you can do anyway for whatever all that's worth i don't know how that come up right now but i just that that's been my that that's been the kind of thing that's been my adventure out of this music is just that stuff like I, the and you know i like to record people and, and yep. put them on the helping people and, and the adventures i've had in that regard yeah that's what i get out of my music so i don't uh, I, I confess, you know, a little fame and fortune would be wonderful. <laughs> I don't think it's in the cards, right? Eh? No, I mean, we, yeah, we, 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 we I mean, out, right? we're, we're having a blast doing what we're doing. Like, we just but, have so much fun when we're scale, on stage and playing. Famous, by the way. <laughs> well, we, we, we joke we're Keswick famous, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure about that. Now, having said, we, you know, we recognize, you know, where we're at and that we started late. At the same time, we are trying to, you know, increase... Our, our reach and our fan base yeah. we would like to play you know maybe slightly bigger venues yeah. you know at some point like we do have some aspirations to get a bit bigger we're not like Matt said we're not you know we're not doing a world tour anytime soon everybody but, wants to get a bit bigger yeah but you just have to wait and see what happens and, uh, sure we're, we're just kind of enjoying the ride at this point and, yeah. and having fun and and, and and sort of see where this goes you know yeah 100% just see where it goes and enjoy yourself along the way and I've been at this for like eight years now and I really I put out, I think, 20 songs and videos, and uh, I don't, uh, and nothing other than what I'm doing has come of it, and that's, I'm happy, like, I really enjoy what I'm doing, and I enjoy my music, and I enjoy it, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it. we'll take, we'll, we'll take whatever, almost whatever gigs we can, we can get yeah. at this point in time, plus all the festival, like, we, you know, we did Tater Stock uh, last yeah. month, and we've done Kitchen yeah. Fest, as you mentioned, yeah. so, I mean, a lot of these festivals, we got a fundraiser coming up, um, you know, uh, next month. Yep. Yeah. Um, so any any of these you know f friends in the community which we've been so lucky yeah. uh, you know uh, 50 new friends just from doing this right and yeah. you know they'll reach out and say hey can you you know, give us an hour of your time at a, at a at a show for us, and you know they're they're, they're freebies. We don't get paid for it, and um, yeah. we'll go out and we'll we'll have some fun for an hour. And I had I've had two it. or three of those, not too many, but I've had two or three of those where people that uh, couldn't get other musicians they called me, you know. So, <laughs> but in the end, you know what? Uh, they they are people who see my music and they like my music. And, uh, it's genuine. Whatever goes on generally is genuine, yeah. and uh, and is appreciated. And any help you can give them in that regard, show up and perform for the people because they need somebody to perform. That's service work, and there's nothing that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, we, we joke all the time. It's like, I don't know what we're doing right, <laughs> but it must be something because people yeah. keep asking us back and people keep asking us to play. So yeah, yeah, no, no, you guys have come into your own as far as what you do, as far as providing a show. And, and I've noticed in the last year that as you've been progressing, now you show up and you provide solid entertainment for your time period there, and you're finished and you leave. And the art, go down, sit down with your family, have a laugh and do whatever. But when you perform now, it's like 110%. And, oh, you, yes. and you're organized and you're ready to go and you're, and you're ready to give people what they showed up to hear. And that's, it's, uh, Neil Young called it good work. And he was asked when. Remember when the uh, everybody was going unplugged? Yeah. That was the new thing, you know. You know, everybody had Bob Dylan unplugged, Neil, uh, or, you know, Eric Clapton unplugged, you know. And they have they have, that that got to be a thing. So they went to see Neil Young to do all his old music in an unplugged tour, you know, like to 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 get in on the hype, right? And he was offered like, tons of money, but he had already started a, a festival going across the country with a bunch of banjos and the violins, and it was like historical music that he was doing and he said nah, I'm a little busy no I'm not doing that and uh, because what he was doing he said because what I was doing I considered it good work 
And that's what's more sure. important than anything else that comes with it. And, I, and I, I think he believes that because I think he said lots of times in his life where he could have chosen a more lucrative path. And he's just, no, I'm doing this. You know, and, uh, so, yeah. I love your music, by the way. Thank you. And I, Thank you. And, and I remember commenting to you, I remember in the early days, can this guy actually sing? Like, <laughs> well, I'm not a, I, I'm a Bob Dylan freak, so I love people who, who's, Vocal abilities come into question. Let's put that. Let's be polite. <laughs> so, but I was, but I, they do. I do, but I watch what everybody's doing, and and new people when they're struggling. So you're trying to figure, okay, can they actually sing? And they're just nervous with it. And then with your, you got that growl in your throat that you do. And then I remember telling you this at Kitchen Fest because you did a couple of songs. One really specifically where it required that sweet songbird voice. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't remember what I told you at the time, but. I, I I told you, you have plenty of ability in that category. You're you know, yeah, you should explore it a little bit. Yeah, I do. If remember. it suits your needs, and uh, yeah, that's so you know I pay attention, right? Yeah, and for whatever the verdict is worth, you can definitely sing. Well. No, I appreciate <laughs> it, man. I appreciate it. So, uh, what's your next gig? Our next gig is uh, May fourth uh, at Lines of Sun. Right here. Oh, well, not at this table. That would be awkward. Yeah. Uh, but we'll hit the stage over there. We're talking um, mariachi going around the table to table. Yeah. Singing punk mariachi. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> intimate and uh, it's going to be nice. No, uh, May 4th, uh, 8 p.m., uh, Lines of Sun here. Right on. Um, so it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a really fun show. It's, uh, you know, if you're a Star Wars guy, you know May 4th. Um, it will be a themed show. It's going to get ridiculous. Um, oh, so ridiculous. You, uh, you, you said, you know, we put on a show. Not everything is, it's not just a gig to us. Some, uh, you know, a lot of the times it's not just oh, yeah, a gig. I mean, it's yeah. not just a job. Like we put we on a show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what stupid thing can I say? <laughs> or what silly things can we do? Um, well, you know, I have to tell you that you're being supervised by the right guy for that particular theme. Oh, Perry. Oh, Perry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't supervise or support it, but whatever you call it, whatever his connection is, he speaks highly of you guys all the time. Oh, that's, right. that's, that's really he, nice. No, no, he does. I can tell Perry's you. been very, very supportive of us. We Perry's, really appreciate Perry's it. like a, a really great guy when it comes to... Oh, hey, one last thing. I have a band in Cuba called Boquet. Okay. And I'm trying to bring them here for what well, I'm going to... Really, I'm going to call it the Amistad Tour, the Friendship Tour, or Amistad. Okay. Strong Friendship. And it's going to be a Cuban-Canadian rockers because I just want to get him here for a tour we're going to book a theater somewhere uh, and I and I went up to see Marshall Dana I don't know if you know of him but um, he's an, another artist around and then Perry said he'll help me with it organizing the stuff I want Canadian manager to invite them because they have to sign the visa for an invitation and they have to show on their visa and their immigration application okay what are you going there to do In the, is that me or you not me not me oh it's me I want to see if they're more important than you. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> they most probably <laughs> are. Yeah. I'm going to shut this off. So, <laughs> so um, I've got to do a... Uh, so I'm going to wait there, and then we're going to book a venue where one of you rock bands can, can come on and play, and then they'll come on and play. Yeah. And it's like you're doing it. And then we'll see if we can jam up a couple numbers that you can do together. Sounds great. Yeah, so if something like that comes up, I'll talk, because Perry's going to help me run it, organize it, but we can do the Stephen Lee Clark Theater. Oh, wow. And then uh, I talked to Marshall Dane last week up in Barrie, and I went up to see him. He's a wild man, a spiritual wild man, so he's a really good guy. And he's moved down, he was up to Alliston before, and he's moved down to Niagara Falls, so he wants to do something in St. Catharines, a theater there. So we're going to try and do a two or three week tour, four week, three or four weeks, a couple of gigs here, a couple of gigs here. So the, one of the gigs would involve you guys and, and yeah. maybe, so I'll, I'll talk to Perry how to organize it and uh, if there's anything we can do to work together, I don't, I'd appreciate it. And, and yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we'd yeah, love yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you'll love these guys. I'll send you a link. Yeah, yeah please do. Yeah, please and do. They're, they're like a premium rock band in Cuba. Like they would, if you've seen them open here for like one of the most famous bands, it wouldn't surprise you to see them be in the opening act, right? Yeah. And um, and so I would see them all the time at the places they play down there. And then halfway playing premium, like the heaviest lead, the uh, bass and drums, and the vocals are really wild. Vocals is amazing. And then they're halfway through, and they're you know, and now Tim Downer's gonna get up and play a couple of songs, and I do it. <laughs> and 
and I tell them when I get up, this ain't rock and roll, but it is me, and they love me, so I'm going to do it, and right. I do it. And, and it, and it works out really good, and so you love these guys as far as they love music, and they love, no, know, so I just want to try and get them here, because I, sure. and not just me, there's, there's a, a dozen other, other um, Canadian guys, old guys like me that go down there all the time, and they love them because they're traditional rock stuff, and uh, I'll send you the link, one of the, one of their Canadian guys passed away recently in Cuba. All his friends from North Bay and everything up here, a bunch of them, they flew down because he had lived there for the last few years of his life and they wanted to meet his friends down there because they yeah, it was sweet. So we had a we had a show one night in a bar and then they were all dancing and I got it all on video and I did a tribute to the guy that passed away from his friends and the band and it was really neat. Like it was it was lovely to be able to do it. And I'll send you the video, and you'll see exactly why I'm wanting to bring this band here. Okay. Okay, good. So I would really look forward to doing that. I would do anything with you guys that you wanted to do. <laughs> and if there's anything that I can do, like if you have a gig somewhere, we're going to play some songs now. We're coming out with a new song. Can you come and record us at a gig? And I'll put it out. And I would support anything that you guys are doing. That's kind of great. No, I appreciate you know, it, man. Well, you guys I always support it. me in anything I'm doing, you know? I mean, you know, you turn it around for a second. You're always, like, any any gig we go to, you are there. You're <laughs> recording somebody. You're doing something. Like, we, we bumped into each it's other in places we never thought we'd bump into each yeah. other. And no, I'm telling you that you have a good one. You have a great well, life. And, I do And have you have a lot life. of you know bands that are very thankful that you are around. Most of so what we I appreciate do, you as much as well, you appreciate us, buddy. I Trust appreciate me. that. And I can tell you, most of what I do, I do it for my philosophy in life. My kids are killing it. My grandkids are spoiled rotten. Nobody needs me. Mm-hmm. And this is my way of saying, thanks, God. And I just make myself useful. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I have a lot of fun. meet a lot of great people, same as you, these gigs and stuff that you do. Yeah. So we're at the Lions and Sun again. Thank you so much, Arash and family, for inviting us to your second home here, your dining room, which uh, every time Arash is in the kitchen cooking a meal, I feel like my brother's in the kitchen cooking me a meal, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's really neat here, so this is a really great place. Any final thoughts that you... I barely had a first thought. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, I mean, thank you for, for, for doing this. Well, uh, we, uh, appreciate we appreciate it. You know, we just, we love what we're doing. We love being part of the music community right yeah. um in in this area and that's that's great like it's very supportive you and uh, you know we, we see a lot of the other acts and you know we all support each other and go to each other's gigs and stuff yeah, it's just a great community thing. to be a part of you love you love and support all these musicians and you want to right and they're better than you so what are you supposed to do like, oh. <laughs> oh i mean every single one every single <laughs> one of them. you 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 mentioned uh ryan sam and, and george uh yeah. you know individually they have more talent in their baby finger than they have for us ryan combined like they're insane oh, yeah. right i go, I go in for a, a music lesson with him once a week and you know what i do i just start playing my songs and he just starts leading. Yeah, he's yeah, so and good. that's he's so good. I, that's that feeds my soul. I, and he, uh, yeah, yeah, he's amazing. So many talented people in this community, um, and you know, you mentioned Perry before, and, and we're huge fans of Perry because. Um, you know, I was doing open mics for maybe six months, four yeah. months, and that's when he's like, "No, I'm booking you." Um, as a solo act like yeah. he's the first person to book me he's the first person to book us as a band yeah. um, he got the word out to other bookers who have booked us yeah. since um, nice. people have you know we've talked to people and we said are you, are you sure you've not seen us and like oh no we spoke to Perry right so yeah. much love to Perry well, yeah, no, uh, he's, who, who he's has, one of the most has shared our, I know. Our, our story with others and, and people have booked us on his word alone right. which is huge so compliments on the Good Brothers t-shirts if you can just look into that uh, and say goodbye to everybody out there, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. How's that? All right. Awesome. Goodbye All to right. everybody out there. Bye, folks. Brother's good. <laughs> I'm Tim Dermick, and this is Georgina Speaks, and we've interviewed Matt and Toby Goodman. <laughs> Keep getting mixed up because of my brains like that. And um, thank you for listening. And if I run into you in the street, be kind, would you? Well, I'll post that.